And welcome to the Writer's Corner live show. Here on the show, we connect authors from around the world to each other and to their readers. You will meet seasoned as well as new and aspiring authors. And some of them will share the tips and tricks of how to get published right the first time. Our featured author for this week is Laurie Delp. She's got two books, Keep Those Clients and We All Have Choices. And so we're featuring her today and we'll get to know her better in a moment. Don't go away. We'll be right back. If you're just joining us, welcome to the show. I'm your host, Bridgetti Lambanda. I'm a live video talk show host, and I'm passionate about social projects as well as responsible social media advocacy. On this show, we bring you the backstories of authors and aspiring authors. And my co-host is Mary Elizabeth Jackson. She's the award-winning author of the Poolicious Children book series, and she's just released a brand new book, um, she's also working on a movie screenplay. Mary is a wife and mom to three amazing, beautiful inspirations in her life. She's also a special needs and disabilities advocate, and she lives in Nashville in the USA, and I am in Cape Town in South Africa. Welcome to the show, Mary. Thank you, Bridgetti. Thank you for that warm welcome. And um, we are very excited for our author today, Um and yeah, I, I am so excited. So I finally got my physical copy yesterday. So it, the copy awesome. and the, the poster, I know I'm so excited. So across the front here, it says uh, not for sale because this is the proof uh, for me to look through and go, yes, yes, this looks perfect or that needs to be fixed. So it's really kind of interesting how, you know, with my publisher that this, uh, not everybody gets to look at a physical proof. Sometimes you only get a PDF to look at for your physical proof. So, uh, are you, and you're actual, uh, you know, okay for everything. So I'm really excited about this and I can't wait. And next week is read across America week. So, um, going to be going into some schools and reading to kids and getting all excited about literacy because that is, man, that's a foundation for so many things in our, like for everything in our lives. Right. So we got to get our kids pumped and excited about, literacy and that empowerment of reading, you know, and knowledge, because knowledge is power, right? Absolutely. I think we, we un often underestimate the um, power of the ability to read because it affects mm -hmm. every sphere of our lives. You know, everything we do starts with the ability to read. You cannot bank without the ability to, to read. Um, you cannot use a telephone without the ability to read. You, um, you know, you cannot run a business without the ability to read, or it would be incredibly challenging to do so. Mm -hmm. And so reading really is the foundation of everything else we have to do. But today we're excited to get to know Laurie Delp. She's yes. the best-selling author of not one, but two books. And I mean, I don't even know where to start and what questions to ask her, but she's got two super duper books. <laughs> I mean, both those titles, Keep Those Clients. I mean, who does not want to keep clients or get new clients? All right. You know, great hot topic that doesn't ever date. It's, it's always going to be a topical thing about, you know, how do I get new clients and keep them? Right. And that's a key to when you, t when you title a book. You know, you, you want something that's going to have that lasting effect that's going to be there till like, well, maybe dinosaurs come back. I don't know. You know, <laughs> we, I know want it, right? we, we want it to be around forever. And, and Lori is a real powerhouse. She's got great energy. Yeah, I've got to meet her in person and we got to sit down and talk to each other, which is so super cool. And she has, a, um, she does these luncheons and she'll, she can tell everybody about those. And I mean, she's just a great powerhouse of a woman. She's trailblazing. She's trying to leave her mark on the world and empower other women too. So, I mean, that's a great formula right there. 
Absolutely. And then her other book is called We All Have Choices, you know. Um, there's so much behind that title as well because we yes. all go through different phases in our lives and, uh, you know, everything everything we do or don't do involves making a choice or not making a choice is also a choice. So a very deep topic. I think we're going to have to invite her back because there's no way we can cover both these books um, in one show. So just a bit about right. her background. She's been in web and graphic design um, branding and marketing for the past 26 years. And apart from being a best-selling author, Laurie is also a speaker and a trainer for the last 15 years. Mm -hmm. She's a certified life, business, and ministry coach for over 10 years. And in addition, she's been with sendoutcards.com forward slash holiday since August 2004. And she's an executive with that company. She's been in network marketing for over 30 years, and she owns nonprofits, copswives.com, wonderfulwidowedwomen.com, and she also co-owns gratitudegirls.com, as well as a local networking service for the past 15 years called Nashville Networking Business Luncheon.com. Wow. I we know. definitely have to invite her more than once. This, this, yeah, this she's, so she's very busy. She's busy. And, you know, it'd be really fun to, to have her come on. I was just thinking about this, to have her come on and kind of demonstrate, like, something that she does. Like, maybe we have some other ladies come on and let her kind of, you know, do a, a group thing. That'd be kind of fun. Yeah. Interesting. Shall we invite her onto the show? Yes. Let's do Hi, Laurie. Welcome to the show. Great to have you. Hi. Thank you. Thank you for having me. That was a great warm welcome. I was going to say, did we butter you up enough? Do you feel love? Can you feel it? I do. Yes, absolutely. Thank so you're, you. You're getting, you're getting local love and you're getting love from South Africa. So it's global love. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. Laurie, so you've written two best-selling books. Um, tell us a little bit about your journey of becoming an author. Uh, I mean, you are accomplished in so many different ways. What was it that made you want to put pen to paper? I always like to ask people, what is it? You know, we all have a book, we all have a story, but not all of us become authors. What is your story behind becoming an author? So my first book I wrote was The Keep Those Clients, and that one um, – I didn't, I didn't want to write anyway. I, I was <laughs> people telling me, oh, you should write a book. You should write a book. And I felt like God was telling me to write a book. And it seemed like every person I was running into was saying, oh, you should write a book. You should put that down. And, you know, the different places I would teach and train at, they would say, do you have a book? Do you have this wrote down anywhere? And I would always be like, no. And, um, and so then finally one day, one of my coaches said, you need to write a book. And I was like, no, other people write books. I do marketing and branding and I'm good in my zone and I'm not a writer. And, and she said, no, you need to write a book. And so, um, so yeah, so I wrote that book. I designed it to be kind of like, it's a short, but to the point book, um, does it have a lot of fluff in there? It's just designed to be like a 45 minute plane ride for people in business to cool. learn. Very, very smart. Very smart. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Thank you. So, um, so yeah, I wrote that one. And then a couple years later, I had um, some different things happen in my life. And I felt like I was being told to write another book to help people in the world because we all go through stuff, right? And we have choices of how we react or act to those situations that come into our lives. And, and that's, so, that's very important that react and act are two totally different things. And so your outcome to whatever this situation is can be completely polar opposites. And most of us are 
in a reaction place because most of us come from, I mean, we all have wounds from our childhood, at least most people. I have, I have met a few who had nothing. Their life was just kind of status quo forever. But most of us have some wounds that we are reacting to in our adult life, which makes us show up the way that we do. And when we can address those and then come from a place of action, it's a totally different experience. Right. I like I like what you said there, you know, uh, and that is so true for almost all of us. You know, our experiences shape who we become as adult, as adults, and unless we can recognize where we're coming from and how that's impacted our current situation, we can never move forward. We can, I think, we we always come unstuck because we, first of all, fail to acknowledge what happened in the past, mm -hmm. and we don't know how to deal with it. You know, some of us, a lot of us just shelve what happens in the past and it just kind of sits in our bodies and right. we get sick and we wonder why we're getting sick and we wonder how we react to people the way that we do. But it's because we haven't dealt with all the baggage, you know, that rucksack. Right. Yeah, exactly. And that can turn into bitterness and disease and sickness. And, and then another thing happens in your life and then that taps on top of the last one and... So yeah, if you deal with it and make choices to deal with it in good ways, that will be helpful for you. Yes, a lot of times when we're a lot of times when we're angry, we're not really completely one hundred percent angry about the situation that's happening at that moment. There's something that's been triggered from our past. Do you, don't you find? Right. Yeah. Absolutely. We all have triggers through a myriad of different things that happen in our lives. The same thing from childhood and adulthood. We all go through stuff. Right. It doesn't matter what race you are, what financial bracket you are or anything. You know, it, we all go through stuff. And right. so, yeah, it just depends on the choices you make of how you handle that stuff. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. I just want to quickly say a warm welcome to our live viewers on LinkedIn and our live viewers on Facebook on the Writer's Corner live page. And if you are watching this on the replay, then welcome to the show as well to our YouTube viewers and um anyone else watching from the other platforms a huge big welcome to you too um so laurie tell us a bit about um you know just your writing journey when you decided to write did you um how did you choose your editor how did you choose your publisher how did you decide to um to market your book do you market your book yourself what came first? Did you decide on the marketing strategy first or did you just write the book and then hope for the best? What was your process? Can you talk us a little bit through that? Yeah, so um, I've been doing branding and marketing for 27 years now um, as of, well, as of June, 27 years. So yeah, so that's what I do for a living. So um, I have, I already had a pretty huge following um, on all different social media platforms channels as well as on my email um, list and things. So so for me, I just kind of wrote the book and put it out there and um, and it did. It hit bestseller the first day mm. that it hit the stands. Um, wow. My editor is a super good friend of mine. She lives here in Nashville, Tennessee also. And she's amazing with words and writing and um reading things and fixes any of your stuff that you didn't any t's you didn't cross or any i's you didn't dot and so um so yeah so she was my editor and we just wrote it like i said i already had a following from a lot of the different um corporate speaking events that i do all over the world and so i just wrote that and like i said designed it to be like a 45 minute read so that way you know because business people are business so for that mm -hmm. Those uh, keep those client book. That's it. They, you know, a lot of business people. They're busy. They don't. They're not going to sit there and read. You know, two three hours. <laughs> so do okay. So did you uh, remind me? Are you self published? I am. Yes. Okay. So then, <clears throat> so for people who are watching uh, now or on the replay. Because you said that it, it was a, was this one a bestseller instantly or the second book? They both actually were. The day that they they hit, they both became a bestseller within a couple hours. 
Okay, so wow. is that because you already, and this is important for people who are looking to brand themselves, uh, wondering what is the importance of having a following, engaging people, making those networking you know, contacts and things like that. Did it go bestseller because you already have such a following and, and then everyone's, you know, you were able to, you know, put it out. Hey, my book on, goes on sale today. And then everyone bought it. Is that how it happened for you? Yeah, that's exactly what I did. I, I did some promotions of it's coming. And, uh -huh. then, um, and then, yeah, then the day that it launched, you know, then I reposted and retagged on all those posts saying, hey, it's here. Go buy it now. <laughs> Right. Okay. So that's important for people who are in this process and journey because, um, you know, I, I think there's that, that belief system and this, you know, is a myth that you put a, you pu get a book published, whether you self publish or you have a traditional publisher of some sort, cause there's so many different varieties now. And then all that, you know, your book goes like, boom, sells, becomes a bestseller <laughs> and you sit back and just wait for those royalty checks. And it's completely the opposite of all of that because whether you self-publish or traditional publish, you have so much hard work that you have to put in so much legwork. I know that I've been in the process of doing so much research to find blog reviewers and mommy groups and make those networking connections and friendships and build those. Um, you know, hey, this is what I'm doing and I'd love to be a part of what you're doing. I'd love you to be a part of what I'm doing. But it, making those honest relationships and connections to support one another and help one another. But, you know, you really do have to do all of that work. It, it doesn't come in a box with your book. Right. Yeah, exactly. You, um, you know, that that's it. You have to do all the work yourself. I mean, you can hire out a lot of work, but really the the biggest things is it's, it comes from your following, you know, it comes with, from the people that like what I teach in my keep those clients book is the people that know, like, and trust and remember you. If you don't keep in touch with them, you know, they're not going to remember you. So, but you have to build those relationships first and then keep in touch with them. And, and then, yes, then it's going to happen, you know, automatically if you follow all those principles. Right, absolutely. That's a very um, that's a very interesting and important point that you mentioned there, Laurie. Because a lot of people think, um, you know, well, they'll wait until they've got the book or the product or whatever it is, and now suddenly they will go um, onto social media and they'll create their accounts, and you know, they think that just having an account is going to automatically bring in this following and bring on the sales. Um, but that's not a, that's not how it works, right? No, no, it doesn't. It doesn't work that way, right? Right. Yeah, See, that's that's the same with a like websites. You know, I've been doing th that design for, you know, like I said, over twenty years, and that you know, a lot of people had that myth of build it and they will come, <laughs> right? Uh, right. And, and back in the day in 1993, when I started it and the internet was first coming out for the real world, you know, yes, it was easier because there wasn't as many web pages out there. Now there's, you know, millions and millions of web pages out there. And so if you want to get noticed, you have to do things to, um, to get people not only to your page, to your books, but you have to build that relationship, you know, cause, cause that's it. Cause people could buy from whoever on Google. Right. So why should they buy from you, whether it's your book or your products or anything that you're offering or selling? You know, why should they buy from you? So you have to build that relationship with people. It's not just a, you know, a one stop thing because, you know, you need your household cleaners. So you buy that from whatever store that's local or whatever. You know, that's normal. But anything else, pretty much, whether it's a product or a service or a book, you know, there's millions others out there so why why should they buy from you and that's what you do when you're approaching a, a um, looking for a publisher that's the same thing you do you have to give them you know in your pitch letter query letter that you're sending out 
you have to put in there your marketing plan. You know, why are you going to be somebody that this person wants to invest their money in you um, as opposed to Joe Schmo down the street? Are you going to work for it? Are you going to, you know, and it, it is, I mean, it, it just, there are so many components to all of it. Um, now, I want to ask you, your second book, is it as short as your first book or is it longer? Yes, it is much longer. Um, okay. It's about three times the size of the first one. Okay. So it does take a little bit longer to read. It's um, it took me a lot longer to write. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, because it's more of a personal journey and it goes over a lot of different topics. Of uh, just for example, a lot of different things that happened in my life and then the choices I made going through those processes and how that affected my life in the future. Right. Um, will you talk a little bit about your um, your networking luncheons that you have and then your gratitude girls? I want to make sure we get that in because there's so much, like Bridgetti said, to talk about with you. And I don't want to run out of time before you're able to talk about those two things. Okay. Yeah. My luncheons. So I started them about 15 years ago. And so it's NashvilleNetworkingLuncheon.com if anyone's in the Nashville or Middle Tennessee area. And um, we do seven of them a month. And it's um, an hour, uh, 11.30 to 1, every, every um, Thursday and every Friday. And so, and it's a different area each month, but they're consistent. So, for example, like Franklin, Tennessee is the first Friday of every month. And the first Thursday of every month is Clarksville, Tennessee. So, it kind of goes like that. So, you can see that schedule on my website. But... So we do um, from example, 1130 to 1145 is open networking. People come in, meet each other, get to know each other. 1145 to 12, I have a speaker who is usually like a life or business type coach. And they give tips, tricks and ideas and things that can help you both in your personal as well as your business life to help get you to that next level. Um, one, uh, 12 to 1215. Then um, people exchange business cards and we go around the room and everybody has an opportunity to give their one minute spiel or elevator pitch. And then um, 1215 to 1230, the food comes in, we network and talk and get to know each other. At 1230 to 1245, I show a little video and I talk about my the, one of the main tools in my toolbox, which is send out cards. And it's where you can send greeting cards. So the tangible touch through the mail. So in the my book, Keep Those Clients, I talk about utilizing all options to keep in touch with your clients via texting, social media, um, phone, in-person, Zoom, coffees, lunches, dinner dates, things like that. And then as well as the tangible touch. So send out cards is the tool that I use for that. And then, um, and then the last 15 minutes is more networking time for people to get to know each other. And so I don't charge anything for these luncheons other than what people um, come in and whatever they order to eat. And then I just tell people that the only charge other than that is their smile and their good attitude. So I just connect a lot of business people together all over Middle Tennessee seven times a month. Okay. All right, we can't hear Bridgetti right now. I just want to give a oh, quick shout go. out to um, Tutachi on LinkedIn. Thanks for joining us live. Um, so, so thanks very much for sharing that information on your monthly. And, I, and again, what stood out for me there is the fact that you do these things with regularity. Um, there's predictability. And I think that's that in itself is a huge learning that whatever you do, if you do it once a month uh, or bi-monthly, whatever you do, do it with regularity so that people know when to expect you and then show up. Right. Like us, we're here every Tuesday right now at 10 a.m. And then the time changes in two weeks and we'll go back to 11 a.m. <laughs> So um, will you talk about your Gratitude Girls, kind of what it is and how it got started and how people can find it? Yeah, absolutely. So our Gratitude Girls show is the fourth Tuesday night of every month. So it's actually tonight. So Yay. if you guys are available, you can tune in at gratitudegirls.com. And of course, we do record it and it's posted live after that as well. Um, 
But yeah, so we started that seven years ago and um, Catherine Asaro Myers, she's my partner in that. She's in Toronto, Canada. So Catherine and I both actually met on stage in Send Out Cards. So we're both in the same company, but we are actually, it's a direct sales company and we are actually cross lined to each other. And so back in 2013, um, the company at our international convention always has a like a theme for the year. And then there's one person that wins that quote, award for the year. And that one year there was a tie and it's the only year in our company history that there was a tie. And, um, and so Catherine was brought up on stage and announced and, you know, all the stuff told about her. And then they ended up bringing me up on stage. So Catherine and I actually met on stage. So, um, you'll hear like in our gratitude girl show, we kind of talk about that. And she says she knew about me, but I hadn't known about her. But anyway, we got to meet on stage and we just kind of felt like it was one of those, you know, kind of like when you're dating, you know, they say the love at first sight. So it was kind of like that instant connection of business partners. And we knew that we had to do something with this. Nothing happens in the world by coincidence, right? There's always right. a reason. And so we created Gratitude Girls on the spot. I, you know, I do websites for a living. So I checked the website was available. I bought it and then we figured out what we were going to do with it next. And so we have um, done uh, featured somebody every single month for the last seven years on the Gratitude Girls show. And the same thing, it's usually someone that um, it's usually a woman. A lot of, we have had a few men on our show, too, but and it's usually someone that's gone through like some sort of tragedy or whatever, and then find some way through that or in spite of that to have gratitude and mm, share their very story. Nice. We talk about that. Very, very. Yes. And, and I've watched uh, some of them and I would love to join you tonight. I will be at a, at, a, at a benefit raising money for education tonight. So I'm going to definitely be watching next month, but I have watched and it's very inspirational and very motivational. And, um, it's very empowering what you're doing, you know, and it's, and I love, and I know Brigetti does too. We both love being able to feature women who are, and men are very important too. the men who are really doing good work in the world, but you know, women and empowering women and each other and supporting one another. And you know, the sandbox of the world is big enough for all of us to play in together, isn't it? Right. Yeah, exactly. That's what I always say is, Two adults can play in the same sandbox. And if they can't, my mommy teacher side comes out to help them behave properly. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I like that. Yeah. Laurie, how can people um, connect with you if they're wanting to either um, attend your webinars or um, or get some help from you? How do they, how do they contact yeah. you? Yeah, so... Um, on social media, I'm Lori Delk on all the channels. So it's L-A-U-R-I-E-D-E-L-K. And then my website is lauridelk.me. So that one, that's the main site that tells all about me. So it just pretty much anything you want to know that's on that website. It also has um, my coaching information and, and different things, um, speaking engagements, if you want me to speak at an event or anything like that. So it's L-A-U-R-I-E-D-E-L-K dot M-E. Awesome. And we didn't even, we didn't even touch on that. The fact that you are a, a speaker for hire. Um, <laughs> and do you mainly speak at women's events or just any business events where um, people can relate to what you, what you talk about? Right. I do a lot of business and corporate type events based on my book, Keep Those Clients. So that is a lot of that and teaching and coaching and training on how to, I have like productivity management um, uh, webinar and uh, uh, PowerPoint that I teach on that. So I, I talk, you know, time management. I don't say that because time's already managed, but it's productivity mm -hmm. management, what you do with your time that matters. And then also, of course, keep those clients. So that's on the corporate side. And I have a few other um, speaking things that I do with that. And then I do do a lot of women's events, um, empowering women. I do a lot of ministry events. A lot is based on my book, We All Have Choices, or on different things 
you know, that just help women and empower women and help them to realize what they were meant to be in this world, right? Because like they say that the, you know, the woman that rocks the cradle, she rules the world, right? And mm. so women, you know, same thing, men are very important too, but women, you know, have a huge influence over the world. You know, they say like in a, in a marriage or in a family, the woman's spirit rules the home. Hmm. You know, and like they say, mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy, right? Yes, yeah, so I have one of those oh, signs. Yes. I have one of those signs hanging in my house. <laughs> my 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 son my son always says, you know, happy happy wife, happy life. Right, absolutely, Lori. Thank you so much for joining us, and we are out of time. And like Bridgetti said, we definitely need to have you come back on because you are this is plethora of so much knowledge and information and great great information. So. You know, we'd love to have you back on. Thank you so much for inviting me. I appreciate it. I had a great time. Yeah, it went by like this, right? <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> Crazy. Thank you, everyone who's watched us live today. And thank you if you are watching the show on the replay. Remember to write good stuff and be inspired one conversation at a time. And we'll see you back again, same time, same place next week on the Writer's Corner live show. And so for me in Cape Town, South Africa, it's goodbye for now. Bye from Tennessee. Mm -hmm.